So, um, I posted this on the YouTube channel in the community section too, so this video's recording is going to go over the answers for anybody who tried to do it from home. Let's just go over the answers and uh, we'll, we'll break them down. If you guys got any questions, let me know. How do you enter into the diagnostics for the refrigerator? So we go down here. The one thing about this particular manual is it had more than one refrigerator diagram and it had more than one control. So we had to go in here to the control. Give me a second to get to the diagnostics. And I think it was right here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Was this the right one? Or was it a different page? This is, I think it was the model A diagram, right? see something this is this is the one that you were doing right how do you get into diagnostics into service state mode all of LEDs on user must use the SW1 button advance how do we get into the diagnostics anybody got an answer I put the freezer temperature and ice type. Okay, so what page was that on? Uh, I got to find the page for it. The freezer because temperature. And then ice oh. type. Yeah, you gotta be here. It is right here. So this is it right here, and I'll make it a little bit bigger for you guys to see it. Thank you. Let me turn this tide kettle off. Okay, so hold the freezer temp and the ice type keys for three seconds. So you hold those two buttons for three seconds. Those would be, you see this SW1 through five? Whirlpool sometimes tells you to go into diagnostics is you pick three of those buttons and you hit them one, then the next one, then the next one, and you do that three times. So it'd be like, you could do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, or I could do one, two, three, any order, but you gotta do them three times, three times, three times. This one is not that way. This one here wants you to press these two buttons for three seconds, and that's because this display is not the same as a standard display. It's a smaller display. So that's how you get into diagnostics. But you have to push the power button first, and then put... Yes, put the power on, put the temperature at the minimum position for both RC and FC. What's RC and FC? Refrigerator, Rear control, 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 something like that. No, refrigerator compartment freezer compartment okay that's okay that so you have to set them to the minimum position a minimum temperature that that is then you're going to hold these two buttons why are they making you do this press power set these temperatures low then press and hold these two buttons why are they making it so difficult for you to get in why can't you just go one two and, you, and you're in because they don't want the customer messing with you. they don't want the customer to accidentally go into a diagnostic cycle take it out of the cooling and who knows what they could do. Sometimes they'll clear error codes or do other things. I remember when I was younger, I used to just Google how to get into error codes and everything, even on like snack machines and soda machines because back in the day, you could press certain buttons that would give you a free Coke. <laughs> but um, you know, they, they figured that out and it doesn't work anymore. But anyways, so that's how you get in. Once you're in, all the LEDs will turn on. So the, all the LEDs lighting up are two reasons why they light up. One is to indicate you are in diagnostics, and the other is to actually check the LEDs in case any of the LEDs don't work. Because a customer might say, hey, this button's not working or this light's not coming on. By going into that step, all the lights on the display come on. So a lot of times when you go into diagnostics, even on washing machines, dryers, whatever, one of the first things you see is everything lights up, even the display, that has numbers, it'll be eight, so every LED for the numbers will light up. And that gives you as a technician an opportunity to check to see if those LEDs are good or not. So let's go back to the question here. Complete the sentence to proceed into the service steps. So what is it saying there? The six right. 
you press all five indi individually from left to right. So you got to go one, two, three, four, five, and to validate the touch function. So what does that mean, validate the touch function? See how they're working? Um, it, that's, that's how you check if the user interface is good. If one of those buttons are sticking or not responding to the touch, that's where you would go and you would check to see if they're responding. Okay, so that was the next question. So now let's get into some of the troubleshooting questions that I posted on there. Customer calls and states the refrigerator and freezer are cool, but the food is not freezing in the freezer, okay? The compressor and condenser fan is running, so you go in the back and you check those and you see they're running, uh, and you notice no airflow in the freezer and it's not a defrost problem. So you go in, remember, when the compressor and condenser fan are running, the evaporator or freezer fan should be running as well. So you go back there and you're looking for frost or ice buildup. You don't really see any ice buildup. So you put your hand back there to see if the Wait, air is coming. Wait, before you continue, say that, can you say that again about the fans? I've been wondering. Wait, so when, the compressor and both fans, the condenser the, while the compressor and, is running, and evaporator, the evaporator fan. evaporator and condenser fan can be running. All three of them should always be on. Yeah, okay. On mechanical refrigerators okay. as well as yeah. electronic. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Okay. I'm wondering about that, okay. So... That you know, so air flow in the freezer is not a defrost problem. What step would you use to test this failure in diagnostics? And what would you need to do to confirm what part is needed? So, what step would it be in the diagnostics? Footstep nine. Check the damper. Well, in a way, the question of damper might be okay, but where's the damper located in, a, in the appliance? Um, if it's that fridge, it's that back panel, it can be that whole Not, not to say the fridge, but where is a damper located on a refrigerator? No, between, between, the between the fridge and the... Yeah. Between the fridge and the freezer. Yeah. So, give me an example of what kind of problem we'd have with a damper. Motor's not working. Yeah, but not, 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 not oh, wait, wait, let, let me rephrase it, okay? Yeah, okay? I'm not saying what's wrong with the damper, yeah. but if the damper failed, really we only have like two or three possibilities of what it would fail. Mm -hmm. It could fail, close. how? If it could fail, closed. It could fail where it's closed. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. It could fail in the open, open position. Yeah. Or it could be anywhere in between and it's not moving. Right, yeah. But what is the function of the damper? It just moves to circulate the air. To circulate the, 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 the air. It the moves from cold air from the refrigerator, to, from the frit, from the freezer to cool the refrigerator. That's correct. Most refrigerators, we're not talking about mm -hmm. dual evaporator refrigerators, most exactly. refrigerators have a damper. So all the cooling is done by the freezer. The damper is just a little window allowing some of that freezing cold air into the refrigerator. Now, if the damper was stuck closed or open, go back to what the original complaint was, is that the food was not freezing. Yeah. If the damper was stuck open or closed, we would still freeze food. It wouldn't lose. The yeah, damper. just the fridge would go. Be the, the problem, if the damper stayed closed, the refrigerator side wouldn't get cold but we still have freezing, or if the damper stayed open, we would freeze milk and stuff. If everything else was working. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel no airflow, the key would be what? Someone said a different number? Step 15 to check the evap fan. Step 15. So if we go to step 15 here. Step 15 says evaporator fan on. Now, you have to look at these LEDs here that depending on what l light is lit on your display, that tells you what mode or step you're in. Notice that just these three lights on, it's defrost heater. If just these two are on, that's a damper heater, a heater on the damper. Yes? Because I put, I put that too. So I put like step nine, checking the damper, and then step 11, checking the damper. Okay, but the damper would affect the cooling on the refrigerator side, whether it's not cooling on the fridge or freezing the food on the fridge. 
But remember, that would not affect the freezer not freezing the, freezing the food. Okay, so we wouldn't look for a damper problem unless the customer said, my freezer is fine, my ice cream and, and meats are good, but my milk is warm or my food's spoiling on the fridge side, or my milk is freezing and my eggs are freezing. Then I'd be looking for a damper problem, okay? So the question said again, let's just rephrase the question. So what step would you use? We said test 15. And what would you need to do to confirm the part needed? Well, if it's, if it's the EVA pan, you just replace the EVA pan. Okay, but that, does, it, does a problem always mean that it's a bad fan motor if the fan motor don't work? No, it could be something on that circuit. Okay, but, but the thing is, is if we went to step 15, what, what's happening when we go to step 15? Testing a dual Okay, so this is this is the reason why I put these questions, so let's understand this for a minute. You go there, freezer's not freezing. Okay? And the refrigerator's not that cool. So we're like, okay, we check the fans, compressor, they're running, we see that there's no air movement in the freezer, so we think we got a problem with the fan. Now, we could just go in there and open it up and start testing it because if the compressor is running, we know that the fan should be running. But in diagnostics, when you go to that specific step, only thing running is a fan motor. No compressors, no fans, no nothing. But when you're in that step, you know the board is saying, hey, I want this part to run and should be sending power to that board. Okay? So you go into that diagnostics just to say, Hey, I want to check that power to the board. It's like a washing machine. Do I want to check the washing machine draining? Do I want to check the washing machine filling? Do I want to check the washing machine spinning? You go to diagnostic and you go right to drain or you go right to spin to check those things. So now we saw the fan wasn't working. We go into the one step that turns this fan on. Now we want to go, okay, I, I'm sending power to this fan, or at least the board's telling me. Now what do we do to confirm it? What kind of checks or tests do we need to make? Is there enough information there to tell you what to do next? Yeah, so if the board is sending power to that, to the damper, and your damper is like not moving or something, and or well, it's not It's not the damper. We're talking about the fan motor, step 15. We said that the damper cannot cause this problem. We're saying the freezer's not freezing. The damper is to control the air in the fridge. It's okay. So we, we're not worried about the damper, we're about the fan. But the board that you said was correct. If we went to the board, we want to check to see if it's sending power to the fan mm -hmm. because our fan's not working. So on this page here, where is it here that tells you the fan motor? Right here. 120 volt output to evaporator fan when cooling. Oh, dude, thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay, so if you guys want to come a little bit closer, you don't have to sit that far away. Come closer. Bring a chair. Come closer. Right? I don't mind that. Just chill out the way. So we want to go on plug P2, and we got to go P26 red white. P1 and P12 white. And that's the answers I want you guys to put. I want you to say, okay, I go into diagnostics. I went to step 15. Step 15 is telling that board to turn that fan on. I don't see the fan running. Could be a bad fan motor, but could also be a problem from the board, right? Could be a bad relay or something on the board. So I want to know, is the board sending power to that fan motor? So what this matrix here on this, this page is telling you, hey, if you want to check the fan motor, you want to check the water valve, you want to check the door switch, you could check these components right from the board. And it's nice. It tells you where to put your meter, what color wires and where. But these are two separate plugs. This is plug two and plug one. This is pin six on plug two. This is pin two. Unplug one. So there are two separate plugs on the board. We're not on the same plug. We're on one meter here and one meter over here. And we're going to be on the red with white. 
and we're going to be the white wire, and we're looking for what? 120 volts. Now, if I had 120 volts, what do I do now? Check the reading. I'm sorry? Check the reading. Did no, the relay is what tells the fan to run. The relay is what sends power to the fan. So you already confirmed that you have 120 coming out of that board. Right? If I got 120 right. coming off the board, these two wires are going to the fan. So that means the relay is closing. Okay, so the problem is not my board. It's most likely the fan mode. Now the only other thing that you might want to do is one, you can unplug it and you can also ohm out the fan from those two terminals or you have to go down to it. But the most important thing would also to be going to the wiring diagram. Why? So you can check the red board. Do you no. want to check the strip circuit? Like what? Not necessarily strip circuit, well, you're but... you're always going to test the load. Oh, and if you get to the load, you have to have the wiring diagram to see what's in the right pins to go. Well, what I'm trying to get at is is there anything else in the circuit of the fan motor between the board and the motor that could stop the fan from running? That voltage test is only telling me, hey, the board's sending power. I physically see the fan's not running. Now the next step would be to go to the fan and say, do I have the power there? Remember I talked about the stove the other day, the guy had a quick disconnect and the neutral wire was not making connection. And that was between the board and the components, okay? But if we go to our diagram here, I think it was diagram A, right? Is this diagram A? I think it is, let me see something. That is B, I think A is probably up here, next page up. This, this is A, so let me zoom it, zoom it back in for a second. Get my mouse. So what we need to do is rotate the diagram, and it won't it won't rotate it here. I'd have to open it up my Adobe, but let's find the evaporator fan motor here. Okay, here's our fan motor right here, right? And then if we follow these two wires, what do I have? Red with white and white. Aren't those the same two color wires? Yeah. So if we look, it goes right to the board and there's nothing in between. Look at the heating element here. We have two thermal fuses in series with the heater. So if we had a heating problem and we have voltage coming off the board, on the Samsung, I had that one video where I talked about there was a little board with four fuses on the back of the machine that controlled the heater. They weren't inside the machine. So we had fuses in line with the heater but if I check from the board, so I got no voltage, said, ah, I got voltage coming out. I got to change, change the element. But if you look at the diagram, you got to make sure that these fuses are good. So by making that test, don't just immediately say, aha, my board's sending power. You got a bad fan motor. In the competition, they want to see you go to that motor and check voltage right to that motor. They don't want you just to say, oh, I got power coming off the board. I got to go to a fan motor. Voltage, yeah, voltage coming to the two. To the motor whatever, itself. Whatever, three, five, two, four, whatever it is coming to the, yeah, coming to the. Because yeah. the connectivity is bad. Okay, so that right. diagnostic step or, or all these steps that we talked about from the very beginning, how do we get in diagnostics? Well, we press these buttons and we're in. How, we got to advance to step 15 to check that fan motor. Then we went to that matrix, and it told us right away, we could find that red and white on the board by using the diagram, but the matrix not only told us where on, where on the board to test, but also told the voltage we're supposed to be getting. Now we went to the board, and we got 120 from there. Now we want to make one last step. We want to go right to the evaporator fan motor. What if it's just a wire back there that was tied up that came loose and just hit the fan and stopped the fan from running? So now you tell the customer, oh man, I, I gotta order you a new fan motor, and you could have got the customer's refrigerator back up and running if you just would have mm -hmm. taken a minute and looked at it. But I know 90% of the technicians, they walk in, and, and they wanna be home at two o'clock in the afternoon. They, they walk in, oh, you got a ton 20 coming out the board, you got a bad fan motor, I'm gonna order you a new fan motor. 
hey, if it's a loose wire hitting the fan, I'll fix it when I come back. But in the meantime, the customer's suffering, waiting for you, and guess what? The fan's on back order. Now they're waiting two weeks for you to come up. So these steps are how we would troubleshoot it. So these questions I'm throwing out there are just trying to get you to think, okay, I got into diagnostics. What step do I use? What do I test? Where do I test? How much voltage do I need? Yes, sir. But wouldn't that also affect the technician because you want to go out there and do things that first time because the second time's on the house. Yeah. It's up by the technician gets paid hourly. I don't care if I go 10 times to the customer's house. I'm getting paid. And if I just walk in and say, you need a fan motor and I leave, I got my 15 20 $30 an hour and I'm getting paid. Do I care if I fix it the first time? No. I get paid $30 an hour to go back and do it again. But if you guys think about it, some companies offer profit sharing and some companies offer this. If it was your company and your employees were not actually taking the time to diagnose the machine, you're losing money. Yeah. Time. We're looking for at least 70, 80% completion on the first visit. Well, otherwise, you're losing money. I've seen service calls with seven visits on them and multiple parts ordered. First, I guess the manufacturer is going to say, well, man, you mean the compressor, the control board, the user interface, the relay and capacitor, and the dryer filter, all of them went bad? <laughs> well, I just want to make sure I had the parts. <laughs> So what does he do? He installs all the electrical parts first. Compressors still don't run. Okay, now you got to do a sealed system job. So you send it to the manufacturer. The first thing the manufacturer says is, hey, what the heck's going on here? What's the odds of all these parts at one time failing? Because technicians don't know how to do this, the steps we're talking about. They don't know how to make tests on board. So they have an idea of what things happen, so they'll just order everything. It's not my company. It doesn't come out of my pocket. But how do you control that if it's your company and your employees are doing it? You gotta educate your employees. You gotta train them. Just think about that, because some of you might be your own business owner one day, and you gotta look at, you know, you don't have to be super profitable, but you don't wanna have a business that's just losing money. I well, just walk home every day and there's a gutter there, and I'll just throw $50 in the gutter every time I walk by it. That's what's happening on your job. Just throwing money away. All right, so anybody got any questions on that? Yeah, could, could there be a scenario where you do step 15? The scenario you, step 15, okay. Yeah, and you have power from the board. You, you actually hear that motor run. What do you mean hear it run? The, 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 the fan motor run. Okay. Um, but you still have the problem. Is that a possibility? Yeah, you could have... The motor could be humming and still not rotating. You know, I've seen ice makers where the fill tube splashed water over the side and a piece of ice jammed up the fan blade. We've had some service flashes like on Frigidaire, the fan motor behind the ice maker in the, fr in the refrigerator compartment, there's a little evaporator, a little fan there, and they have a shroud around the fan. And when it goes in the defrost, it creates steam and then when it touches something cold, it creates water droplets, but it's in the freezer compartment where the ice is made, and then the ice builds up there and the fan don't rotate. So you could have a mechanical problem. So I've seen bad bearings. The motor's humming, sounds like it's running, but if the fan's running, there's no airflow. The only other thing could be, it could be frozen behind the panel you couldn't see in defrost, and maybe the air is not circulating. But usually, by the time a customer has a defrost problem, there's enough ice buildup on the back that you would see it migrating off the back panel where you could see it coming off the back. And then you would say, oh, I got a defrost problem. Okay? Next question, number four. Customer calls and states, new refrigerator was just delivered. Your test determined the refrigerator's in showroom mode. What is showroom mode? It's the state they said it at the showroom where 
customers could come in and play with it and then there'd be no water. You know, they can see the user the interface. Right. They, might, they might see the lights come on and something like that, but the fans and the compressor are not going to work. It's not going to go into defrost. And why wouldn't we want that to happen? Because if I just put a showroom and plug it in, it cools. If the customer opens the door, who cares? Why would I want to put it in a specific showroom mode? So then no. Because we don't want it to use electricity? No, because it's still it's using some electricity. It's, it's, it's sitting in the showroom? Yeah. Well, like when you walk or, into Home Depot or Best Buy or something and they got the, the, the appliances and they have it plugged in, light, if it's lit up, it makes you want to interact with it. If it's just stagnant, you open the door, you look and say, oh, yeah, it's got room in there for shelves, and I close the door, that's it. But with lights being on, you can play with it. But if customers are turning it on and off and playing with it too many times, it could damage components. But the other thing is, is that whenever it goes into cooling, it's going to remove the moisture inside the box and create frost on the evaporator. It's going to go into defrost. Now, if we go to unplug it at one point, we're going to have moisture and humidity in there we can create mold or other things, but sometimes they sell these units off the floor and they don't take it out of showroom mode when they unplug it. And so when it goes to a customer's house, it's in showroom mode. I had a tech call me last week or two weeks ago, I don't remember, but he says, hey, the refrigerator's in showroom mode. I can't get it into cooling. I don't know how to get it out of showroom mode. So you as a technician have to figure out how to get it out of showroom mode. So that's why I brought it up. It's an actual thing that happens. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens. So how do you get this thing out of showroom mode? So we gotta go over here into the manual. Come on. The touch screen on the bottom is not working that well. So if we go here, if we go control F, just type the word showroom and let it search for showroom and water filter reset and showroom mode. And this says for display model only. So if you want to put it out there in display and don't want it to actually operate, for water filter indicator, reset the LED test. Press and hold temperature button for three seconds until the water filter LED blinks. Mm, that's for the water though. That's not yeah, showroom. that's not the full showroom. That's mode. not the full showroom mode. Yeah. Where's where's yeah. the showroom you mode? The top of the temp setting button until the maximum is on. Oh, and here it is, right here. Switch there you to go. simulate. Yeah, it keeps going down. So exit. Where does it say exit? I'm, I'm having a hard time here trying to run with my finger. It's just too sensitive because I've zoomed in too far. Uh, okay, so it's here, right? Mm -hmm. This number two is the show. That's where you start from. Yeah, that's to start the show remote, so get yeah, out show you, remote you go going past on the bottom. It. I thought it was this display that we were talking about. That's the water. This is showroom mode within two minutes after power up. So in other words, you want to unplug it. You want to power it up to get it into showroom mode. Yeah, I was talking about going in first. Okay, so we. it says within two minutes after power up, you're going to toggle temp setting button until max is on. So in other words, you're going to plug it in. Within two minutes, you got to do this to go in the showroom. This would be just if a salesman didn't know how to do it, and you work for a company like Best Buy or Home Depot or something, they need your help to put it into showroom mode. Okay? To exit showroom mode, toggle the temperature set button with max is on. Hold the door switch to simulate the door closed. So they want you to open the door and hold the door closed and press and hold temp setting for three seconds. Why are they telling you to hold the door switch? Couldn't you just it's, close it's the door? It's something that a customer would never do. Yeah, like but... the door is open and you press it But But if the door was closed, wouldn't that hit the door switch too? Okay, but you have to hold down the door switch while pressing a button that's inside the fridge. That's correct. So this, unless you're an X-Man... 
No, no, very good. That's what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. This control, they normally the controls are where? Where the water and ice dispenser is, and you can do all this from there. This particular unit is a lower end model. It's not the top of the line model. So it's got the user interface inside the fridge and you have to open the door to press all these buttons. But you have to hit the door switch to, to continue that cycle to get it out, okay? So you can't hit the button without hitting the door switch at the same time. So that was exiting showroom. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Uh, your refrigerator's not cooling, and you notice excessive ice buildup on the rear wall. We just talked about it. So now, we open up the freezer, and we see the back panel where the evaporator is, and the ice is building up on that panel. So we see ice there, okay? Um, you enter diagnostics to check the defrost cycle. Where would you put your meter leads to test voltage being supplied to the defrost heater? We'd go back to that chart, right? The chart was up or down on the um, in this book now. I got to figure out where it is. I think it was up, wasn't it? Yeah. Let me zoom out a little bit. It's a little bit easier to find. It's here, right? No. Oh, must be the other way, the chart. Here it is. For wiring diagram A models. And so on the top of the page, you notice I put four A models because this book had more than one diagram and more than one uh, set of features and controls. So where's the defrost heater on here? Right there. <laughs> it, is it there? That's right there. No, there is that. Right here? It's, it's um, on there. Connector P2. Right there, P2. Defrost heater P6. is right P6. here. Right. Yeah. That's the defrost heater. 120 volts output the defrost heater. We're going to have P27, P12, brown and white. Right. I'm not going to go to the diagram there. But this, again, is where you're going to check for a defrost cycle. Now this one had heating elements, and it had something else. What else did it have in the circuit? Switch. It had the two thermal fuses. I pointed them out to you. So where would you put your meter leads and test voltage supply to here? You put it on the board on those two pins I told you, and we'd look for 120 when we're in that step. We have 120, we know the board's sending power out. We need to then go and check to see if the thermal fuses are bad or the heater's bad. But if we've got voltage, we know we got to go down to those components to check those components. Does that make sense? So the idea behind this assignment, again, is I know how to get into diagnostics, but how do I use diagnosis, diagnostics and when do I use a specific step? And once I'm using that step, what do I do with it? So these things that we're talking about is, okay, it's got a defrost problem. We know a heater melts the ice. So we got to go into the step that's telling the heater to come on. But then we got to see if the board's sending power. And if it is, then we got to check the components to find out which one of those components failed. Okay? Any questions on that? No? You guys catching on so far? Doing well? Hopefully. So, how much voltage supplied to the refrigerator thermistors? Well, we could probably just see it here on the uh, on this chart, right? It's like five, five volt DC. DC. Five volt DC. Look, all of the thermistors have five volts DC. It's there on the chart. Some of them don't have them, so you gotta you gotta know some some of them. Well, let's ask a question. On a different like brand. Of how would you use that five volts DC? Right. So. Coming off the board? Not how, not how would you test for okay, the voltage? Okay, how would I use it? How in in use other it? words, I'm told you that I, I asked how much voltage those thermistors get it. This five chart tells me yeah. five volts. Yeah, yeah. What do I do with that information? You're going to go to And why? Diagram. You're going to go to the diagram. You're going to see where the thermistors are looped into the board. And well, it, it, told, it told me right here so, where it's so looped then, into so the board. Do, right here. So what you can do... 
is you're gonna go to the thermistor. One of them gonna be um, in that little side little panel thing that like, comes out, and you have to reach in and grab the thermistor. Okay, but in different that's, places. You just go. You go to the thermistor. But that's not what I'm talking about. And you get five volts coming in. But that's not what I'm talking at about. The thermistor. But if you don't get five volts, what do you do? So it's like. Well, here's here, here's the thing, though. You're gonna look for five volts at the thermistor. That's it. Okay, but. I'm trying to say, what what are you doing with that information? What am I doing with it? It, it, tell, it tells me, okay, let's say the refrigerator compartment thermistor is yeah, supposed yeah. to get 5 volts. Why would I even check that? Why would I even check the 5 well, volts? Well, if, if, if the board is not sending that voltage, that means it's not going to be cycling properly. Okay, yes, if the yeah. board's not sending the voltage, but why yeah. would I even test for that 5 volts at that sensor? Or on the board? the board is doing it or not. <laughs> No, okay, what I'm trying to get at is that if the refrigerator sh showed an error or fault code, yeah, sure, that that sensor's not working, I want to know whether the sensor's bad or the board is bad. So I'm going to go to the board on these two pins, both gray wires, and see if I have five volts at those two pins. Now, if the board's giving me an error of a bad sensor, bad thermistor, and I have five volts, then I know the board is doing what it can to problems my sensor. If I don't have five volts, the problem's my board. But if I'm getting the error code of a bad thermistor, remember, a thermistor plugs into a board, but a board has resistors and capacitors and diodes to create that circuitry. The board could have a fault itself. It could have got cockroaches on it or, or moisture on it, shorted a little resistor on the board, now all of a sudden the board gives a thermistor error and it's not an error with the thermistor. It's an error with the board. But how do you know? You look for five volts at that point. If I have five volts, then the circuitry on the board is good. And the problem's my thermistor. If I don't have the five volts, then the problem is my board. But that's how we use this information. All day and twice on Sunday. Thank you. Stupid question. Yes, sir. Does the system have to be plugged in and on for you to read going out? If you're doing voltage testing, the system has to be plugged in. Otherwise, there's no voltage coming off the board because it's the input of 120 from the wall, and the board changes it either to 5 volts or 12 volts or 120 is coming off that board depending on the components. So that's what the other part of this chart is, is telling you how much voltage each part gets. You don't get that all the time. We did a Frigidaire diagram refrigerator the other day, and I said this side is all low voltage and this side is high voltage, but you had to look at the picture of the board with a plus 12 or a plus 5 to know how much voltage is going to that part. This is nice. This tells you this is the voltage you have going to that part. You had the voltage, the part's bad. You don't, the board's bad. You're done. So... You know, I remember when I first started working on appliances, everything was just thermostat timer, very simple. You start putting these boards on, and you're looking at this, this board with all these wires on, and you're like, hell, I don't know where to go. But this information is all here in these manuals and inside these diagrams. You need to know, what do I do with that information? That is how we test these circuits and these components. So anything under five, it would mean that the board is bad. Like even if you get like a four. If I got three volts, five volts. I'm gonna change the board because it says five volts. Thermistor voltage is always gonna be five volts. What happens is the thermistor is a resistor, it changes resistance value. So the amperage going through it is going to slow down the higher the resistance or lower the resistance, but it's still five volts. So the board is reading the amperage draw going through the resistor, and just like your multimeter, you put it on a part and you check resistance of a part, your meter is actually like, I mean your board is actually like your meter. It's testing the thermistor with the five volts, and it's getting a resistance reading based on that math. That's what it's doing. Just like you put a meter on a thermistor to check its resistance, the board's checking the resistance. It says, hey, it's, it's got 1,200 ohms, it's this temperature. Or it's 30,000 ohms, it's this temperature. So that five volts going through that part when the resistance changes, it goes faster or slower depending on the resistance going up or down. The board sees that and it mathematically converts it to temperature. Okay? Let's go to the next question. 
Where in the refrigerator is the FC thermistor? So, you have to find it right here, right on this page right here. The FC thermistor, which is the freezer compartment thermistor, is located here. What goes here? The damper. The damper. The damper. But this is the freezer side or the refrigerator side. Freezer? So freezer control? Well, freezer condenser? This is controlling the temperature of the freezer. So if the freezer is not cold enough, what do we want to do? We want to close the damper. Naturally. But it's, it, so it's got to be in control. the freezer compartment. I'm sorry. Freezer, what? So FC stands for refrigerator compartment? Freezer compartment. Oh, RC freezer is compartment. refrigerator compartment. Refrigerator. Oh, okay. 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 So that's what the RC and the FC mean. You see what RC and FC mean? I see, you see. What tubing is a defrost thermistor located on? Wait, tubing? The defrost, what? Cap tube. Where is this diagram here? No. Uh, I had it open. Now I don't even know where it is. Oh, here it is. Should be right here. Here we go. Defrost th thermistor goes on the cap tube side where the capillary tube is coming in. It's important they tell you that because normally when you've got a defrost thermostat or bimetal, there's the same thing. They just call it something different. It's located on what we call the suction line, which is the freon leaving the evaporator. Okay? But the thermistor is on the, free, on the freon entering the evaporator at the cap tube. It's measuring the temperature of the refrigerant and how long it takes to pull that evaporator temperature down. And it's located on the cap tube. So don't confuse it with the defrost thermostat. Every manufacturer does something different. So when you take it off, make sure you make note of which one you do. What if I put it on the wrong pipe? Will it defrost? Yeah, it'll probably defrost, but it might not defrost as often or not defrost for as long of a defrost cycle based on it not being mounted on the right tube. That's why it's important to know where it is. So some of these questions were just to get you to go through the manual and try to find this information. There's so much information in these manuals. I don't want you guys to sit here and read the whole darn book, even when you're working on a refrigerator, but we need to know, look at all this information that's on there and how do I use all this information while I'm servicing appliances? Mm -hmm. Has anybody got any questions on this? Uh, where can you find all this information at? Is there like a website? What do you mean find the information? Like let's say you go to like a fridge and like, the information is not there, like the wiring diagram. Like the well, this manual and the wiring diagram, uh, you know, I'll promote, I'll promote my boy Samurai at Appliantology, that if you are not factory authorized, you can't get into Frigidaire's site, you can't get into Whirlpool's site. Now, I think Whirlpool, their website service matters, they went ahead and made it so that the they, they made it so that the um, the refrigerator, now you see, distracted me from what I was saying, but you could go to Service Matters and download it, and I think it's like two or three hundred dollars a year for an account, but that's just Whirlpool, okay? So what if I need Frigidaire stuff, or what if I need GE stuff? Well, you're not going to get it from Service Matters. That's just Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, you know, some other brands as well. And the same thing with Electrolux Frigidaire, they have their own technical website, but I don't think that they have like a subscription base for people who are non-factory authorized to access it. So Appliantology, which is Master Samurai, I'll, I'll promote him, he's got his own channel, and I even pay for it, so sometimes when my technicians call me for technical advice, I go to a site that, let's say Bosch or, or 
or some other manufacturer, I don't have access to their technical website. He doesn't have every diagram and every service manual. I tell you what, I'm really impressed with what he does have. And I think it's worth paying it, worth, worth, not worse, worth paying the subscription fee if you're doing enough service calls. Yes, sir. Can you assume that if a, 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 a refrigerator guy, oven in my way, whatever, that has a owner's manual and diagnostic tampering, can you assume that it's attached to the unit if they've never serviced it at all? If the machine's never been serviced, it should have at least a technical sheet which may have diagnostics and a schematic for sure. Almost every machine is produced with a schematic. You go to a machine and the schematic's not on there, someone got to it before you. And I knew people that were like that, that had their own business and they would go and work on it, pull a tech sheet out, and they put it in their tool bag and leave. I'm not gonna leave it for another, <laughs> for another company. Slimy. But the people do that. You know, it, 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 this isn't the same thing as that, but years ago I worked with this guy at Best Buy. We worked in the, in the shop, in the warehouse and had all these ceiling fans and every wire was black no white neutral no nothing every wire was black power coming in power going to the fan coming back whatever i said why did you wire like that he says job security i'm the only one knows how it's wired job security that's evil but that screws everybody else up anybody else that wants to get in there can't do it that's why i hope rb um put a lot codes on their thing they're the only ones that can service it 